here in going forward with the webinar here, just give you an outline of what we're going to do. We're going to show you uh, a few PowerPoints like you can see up on the screen there now and then go into a feature demo of kind of different call flows and things and end up with some settings. Some of you will have been using it for a while. Some of you have uh, not seen it before. So we're going to kind of go over a general overview of all the features, but point out some of the recently added features for those that have been using it. So on the screen, you can see a uh, few of the main ideas are our design goals as we started several years ago seeing that there's a need for an attendant console and what we were design, designing for and I'll go through those in a little more detail here in the next slide so first of all here you see modern look and feel we wanted it to look like your link 2013 client or and also now Skype for business client so that training is very easy. If you're used to uh, using the link client, it's very easy to move over. And we also did a lot of work around making the user interface very clean and, and intuitive. So you, you have context-based buttons that make it very easy to get to what you need when you need it without a whole lot of extra buttons cluttering up what you're doing there. So we made a wanted a modern look and feel and that it would look and feel like what you're used to. Another very important thing is the, the fact that it's very simple to implement. In fact, on most, on most of systems, when you install it on most computers, it is in fact a one minute. That's not just a figure of speech. It is in fact a one minute install. And there's no servers needed. So you don't need to worry about putting a server in your uh, environment and adding redundancy. If you have redundancy, that adds other servers. No servers at all works in or outside of the edge, hosted, on-prem, doesn't matter. If the link client works there, the attendant pro client will work there as well. Another thing that we wanted to keep in some of the early versions, especially like uh, Microsoft 2010 attendant console, there was a limited amount of devices it worked with. So there were some devices that would work with the standard client that would not work with the attendant client. So the people that had the attendant client had to have you know a different compatibility list. We have full compatibility with everything that is compatible with the link client. We're compatible with it as well. So there's no separate compatibility list that you got to keep in mind to figure out. Of course, the big thing was the efficiency. Uh, we wanted something that was very, very efficient and easy to use when people have high volume of calls and they need to, to do their work quickly. So I'll show you that more in detail in the demo of how efficient it is to use Attendant Pro, and you'll, you'll, that will become very apparent. Next, full functionality. Some of uh, the clients will give you a limited functionality set, so you don't have video or you don't have screen share or a group chat and this to the people that will be most likely your heaviest users of UC they're on the phone all the time they're doing things and then they were limited in their functionality we have no limitations we don't take any features away from link or Skype for business we only add features and there again you'll see how that works as we go through the demo so those are some of the things we kept in mind as we designed this as you see on the screen there is a uh, picture or that's the that's a live program of attendant pro and what we're going to be doing is showing you the demo of it as we go through for, so first of all I'm going to go uh, around the screen here this is me this is uh, my presence I can change that here and next to this is the note standard link note here's some uh, shortcut keys that we'll go over later here's an email button you can call your email and it'll show a number if you have unlistened to email uh, voicemails voicemail button will show a, a number of uh, unlistened to voicemails and this is the options menu which we'll go into later as well here's a search field that will allow you to either do outbound calls or transfers and you can do searches by extension number by phone number by name uh, whatever you know about that contact 
to search for it there. In the middle here is the groups, and those are the same groups that you'll see in the link or Skype for Business clients. So if you look at these groups here, that is the same groups that I have in my console there. So they are direct linked. As you make changes in one, it makes changes in the others as well. And as you can notice, my my the link 2013 client is running at the same time just on another screen here as the attendant pro so that's the groups that you have contact groups and along the bottom is some shortcut keys which we'll explain a little bit more later how those they work how you can set those up and of course the the call windows here incoming call current call and handled calls over here on the side so First of all, I'm going to bring a call in and show you how the link client does a transfer. And then I'm going to come back and do that same transfer in Attendant Pro. So I'm going to bring that over. I'm going to answer this call and get Attendant Pro out of the way. And so here is my call window in link. And if I want to transfer it, I hover over. I click transfer, I come down here and I have to scroll a little bit in this case to get to another person or number, and then say I want to transfer to Japheth. Note, I start typing, it comes up, and then I can transfer or I can um, drop down and go to voicemail. So complex scenarios, uh, difficult for a high volume person to use. So now I'm going to do that same scenario with Attendant Pro and you'll see uh, the same call coming in and as soon as it calls it's going to pop up in front of me I can use my hotkey or my mouse to answer it once I answer it I can come over here and with one click all those steps I just told told you to get it to directly to voicemail one click and it's gone to the uh, JFS voicemail voicemail there so very very efficient and I'm going to go back through now and, and bring a call in and show you what's happening different scenarios and stuff like that but I wanted to point out the the way we did it just as efficiently as possible so as you can see here incoming call you can you can see eight of them at one time and then it would go to a scroll bar so it goes beyond that but if you have more than eight incoming calls at one time you need to get somebody to help you out but anyway uh, incoming call you can answer it or, or refuse it there with the current call, obviously only one call can be in your current call window. What can you do with it as a current call? So first of all, you can put it on hold. Basic functionality. If there's a picture associated with that contact, it'll show up here. It still gives a name or number, uh, caller ID here. Gives a holding timer. So you can see, and again here, you can see eight visible at one time and then goes to a scroll bar. And you can see how long somebody has been on hold and uh, easily see who you should be grabbing first there again so basic hold park uh, for those that don't use park the difference between park and hold hold only you can pull it back park it gives you a, a parking spot or a parking number so in this case it's 821 and then that's used to page it out and say uh, somebody from sales pick up on 821 or you can instant message that or email or holler across the divider, whatever your office looks like there. So with park, anyone can pull it off a of park using that code. One of the things we have done to enhance that or to make uh, park even more useful, and I notice I have it set for 30 seconds so it rings back in as, you know, lets me know that, hey, I did not take care of that park call. But one of the things we do that allows you to use park more efficiently is this park for user or park for group. So I'm going to park for user and come over here and bug Japheth again. I double clicked on Japheth and on his contact there and it sends him an instant message automatically with a clickable link that he can click on that and answer the call. So very easy to get that to get that to him and he is not picking it up so I can pull it back and do something else with it if I would right click and do for a park for a group and send it to any one of these groups here everyone in the group would get that park instant message and it would 
whoever whoever picks it up first would get that call then. So whoever clicks on that link first. So it makes it much easier to use Park, much more efficient to use Park. And by the way, that is one of the the new features that recently came out. So that's something that a lot of you probably have not seen yet. So that's the, the park option, hold and park. And now we're going to go into what are the transfer modes or transfer options. So I'm going to bring another call in here, answer that. Blind transfer. And the reason that that is grayed out automatically, I'm going to skip ahead to one setting here ahead of time, but transfer mode on answer is blind, set to blind transfer. You can set to that to whatever you most commonly use, but it's set to blind transfer in my case. So that means when I answer a call, it's going to be in blind transfer mode. So one click sends it off as a blind transfer. What blind transfer does is sends that off, and if they don't pick up, it goes to voicemail, or you know, it, it just sends it off. You don't talk to anybody about it. You just send it off to that person. And you can do pretty good with that based on their presence. You see who's available and who isn't. And one click allows you to go to the different destinations, which we'll get to later. Blind transfer sends it off. The next transfer type is safe transfer, which that will send it to their main extension, but it will not go to voicemail. Instead of going to voicemail, if they don't pick it up, it will come back to you on hold down in this box down here, and you'll be able to pick it back up and say, okay, I see he did not pick up. I'll transfer you to somebody else. So that's a little bit higher touch, a little bit uh, more care to make sure that somebody doesn't go to voicemail. A step more... Um, higher service or whatever you want to call it, taking care of it, is the consult transfer. Some people call that warm or polite transfer. But with consult transfer, if I call this other person, it puts me on, it puts the caller on hold. I call that other person. And when they uh, say, yes, they can take the call, I pr click consult transfer again, and it completes the call. So I, I talk to the person. They want to talk to Japheth. I call Japheth and say, do you want to take the call? He says yes, and I click consult transfer to finish that call as well. So that's the consult transfer or polite transfer in some areas. The last transfer type here is invite a new user to a call. So what that does is starts a conference, and once, the, once you've passed the information on and say, hey, we were talking about this, uh, take it from here, then you drop out of that conference, they continue to talk, and you can go on to your next call or whatever. So that creates a conference and then allows you to drop out. This little thing here, this little note field, works with uh, Exchange 2013 web services, and I can keep notes on anybody. And this is one of the newer releases that this came out in. I can take notes there and you, you name it. Uh, this is a very important person. Make sure he gets taken care of. You know, Make sure he doesn't go to voicemail. Or uh, this is a nuisance call, send it to voicemail, or remember to tell him this the next time. Whatever, whatever you want to remember about that person, the next time they call in, that note will be there uh, for you to, at a glance, say, oh, yeah, that's right. I wanted to tell him this. So, and, of course, you have uh, more on this window is the, the mute and hang up uh, buttons there. So that's the, the basic current call window. I want to point a new feature out here. This is in the latest release, uh, so a lot of you haven't seen this yet, is the, the more option down here now allows you to pick your transfer type while it's on hold and transfer directly from hold. So while this thing is on hold, I can send that off to his voicemail or to uh, what, any other destination there. So I did. If I was not sure what's going to happen, I put it on hold and I figure out what I'm going to do with it, and then I transfer directly from hold without having to pull that person back and talking to them. So just one more way that we make it a little more efficient. Just less clicks, less less action there. The more we can do that, the better. So, and one other thing that is new on this release with the with the more options here. So not only can you do all the different transfer options directly from hold. You can also transfer to a current call. So if I have a current call in my current call window and I pick to transfer to that, it connects that current call with the caller on hold. Or if I want to do a merge call, I can merge it with that current call 
and that allows all three of us to be in that conference where the person that was on hold, the person in my current call window and myself are all talking in a conference and then I can drop out and they can continue. So two additional features that allow you to quickly join people. Uh, if after the fact you decide you're going to do something different than you expected with that call, you can transfer that call to the current call or merge that call with the current call. Those, those are both uh, new features in this release. So I have a call in here and what can I do with it so I'm gonna go over here to the contact cards and there and this is like I said the different groups and you can move contacts around between the groups add add and delete from here or from your link client but um, what can all you what can you do with the contacts first of all I'm gonna note the different sizes so a small contact here gives you a few less options visible but one thing to note Every contact size, no matter what you pick, there's a right-click menu that gives you all the options. So even if, if you don't do something typically, but you need to occasionally, you can get there with a right-click option. So that's a small in case you need to see a whole bunch of contacts at one time. There is also large, and this is especially uh, good for touch screen. Uh, that it's more touch-friendly and gives you uh, a few less options than the medium, but it gives you uh, much larger icons to use with touchscreen. And there's also some custom contacts. So with custom contacts, we can do anything. Uh, we can make them huge, we can make them small, what icons you want, what font size you want, uh, all kinds of stuff. This is a rather ugly rendition of a custom contact, but it is it shows you the options that you, it's very flexible with what you do in those custom contacts. And I'll explain how those get set up a little bit more later. So what I typically do, since I typically use the mouse, uh, at least to complete transfers, is use this medium contact style. So what can I do with this call? I can, by double clicking or clicking here, send it off to Jafith in this case, just send it off to their extension. It goes with based on whatever transfer mode I have selected. So. Typical transfer uh, option there. Transfer directly to voicemail. We make that with a one-click option so that you can send it straight to voicemail. If you know they're not available, no use you have that extra ringing and noise, or if you know they're in a, in a meeting or something, straight to voicemail. Also, you can do straight to mobile. If you have somebody that is a road warrior and, and wants their calls transferred to them on their mobile, you can do that with one click. So it's not any additional hassle for you to be able to get there. Notice that this demo user here doesn't have a voicemail and does not have a mobile in the system, so that icon does not show up. So it will only show the the options that you have available. So it makes it very easy for you to know uh, what what you can do with this call. So that's a, the basic call flow, and here is just a uh, a very simple starts an instant message with that person. So nothing nothing significant there. Uh, just a basic starting uh, instant message. And now we take this further than, than your link environment and we move into Outlook and Exchange. So we want to bring that one-click efficiency even further into other jobs that you're, you're likely to do as an attendant, a receptionist, or an admin uh, type of person. What else are you going to do? So one thing very likely, you're going to be sending a lot of emails to people within the company. Uh, for whatever reason, very easy. One click pops those up. And if you ever get that annoying person that calls in and they say they want to talk to Japheth, I'd look, glance at it and say, he's inactive. I say, I'll send you the voicemail. He's not available right now. And they say, no, 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 don't send me the voicemail. I don't want to leave a message. Just tell him to call me back. Well, let's assume I'm a busy receptionist and I have another call coming in and I have to get rid of this call, I'll bring the next one in, and I don't have time to do uh, write a note, holler across the office, send an email, whatever. Uh, makes it very difficult. You have to remember that for after the next call. This solves that problem. So the next time somebody says, no, just time to call me back, one click brings up a message addressed to that person, says this person called in on this number. They called at this time. Uh, and all of this is customizable to say what you wanted to. And, of course, you can add to that if you want to. So the next time the caller says, no, just time to call me back, you can go click send and you can assure that caller before you hang up that message was just sent he'll get back to you when he gets a chance you don't have to remember it 
the caller knows it was taken care of and you can move on without taking any additional time. It makes that, that uh, annoying request very easily fulfilled and efficient just with that one click access to the email. And also we bring up one click access to somebody's calendar. So uh, if you have if you have to look at somebody's calendar, you can see that as well. And by the way, I believe one of these I do not have access to. Yeah, so this here I do not have uh, rights in exchange to see, so it just doesn't let me see that. So that's that's some of the, the things that you can do with a call as it relates to the contact card. And notice these few buttons on here. In this case, I have six of them. Uh, three calls and actually uh, four other options gives me a huge amount of options when combined with the different transfer types and what all you can do with that. Very simple, easy interface to allow all kinds of different call flows. So that's the, the basic call flows. And, and remember on this, you have additional options all the options available in a right-click menu. That's the basic call flow scenarios, and, th and that covers uh, the majority, of, or as far as we know, every possible scenario is covered with those with the options we have available there. So now moving on a little bit into settings, and once and I'm going to move into this um, these one-click shortcuts here at the top. So uh, what is what are these things here? It, with that, we're trying to make every commonly repeated task one click or one shortcut key away. So I'll show you a few ideas that we have already that we have built into this, but we, we welcome feedback on what else you do as a common task that you repeat daily or, or multiple times a day and how we can make that one click away or one keyboard shortcut away. So a few ideas we have. If you want to start another program, here I can start a command prompt or, or that PowerPoint I started with, I can with one click bring that up ready to show. So it, it extends it beyond uh, your standard call flow stuff and, and allows you to open other programs, open a website, whatever you typically do in a, in a call or in your day-to-day -day work, we make that one click away. Uh, some other ideas, view your missed conversations, turn forwarding on or off uh, to a certain number, join a conference call with DTMF. So here we're dialing a conference number that we frequently dial and we have a certain uh, conference code that we have to press every time. So here with one click, it'll dial that number, wait the, the programmed amount of time, dial the conference ID or conference pin and get us right in there very easily. So it gives it gives a very easy way to do that. Here we have a, a thing that if you watch my presence up here in the corner, as soon as I click on this away, it immediately changes it. And if I reset, it goes back to in a meeting. Whatever you know, a, a scenario where that might be very important is if you have a response group that. Uh, routes calls based on presence and you want to step away from your desk but you want to make sure that as soon as you step away it, it notes you as away rather than a minute or two later so you don't miss any of those calls so one button press could be set up for f1 and it immediately changes you to away and when you come back f2 immediately brings you back or whatever whatever you set that as so that and, and any other scenario where you see presence is valuable to be able to change that so another thing that uh, this allows the, these one-click things. It allows uh, ways to do quick and easy calls to a certain group of people that you do a lot of calls to or transfers to. So in this case, Jfith is Shift F4. So I'm going to press Shift F4 instead of clicking on it this time, and that immediately called him. But not only it does it do an outbound call, that same that same motion because of our our context-based intelligence behind it. Now I'm going to bring a call in and I press F6 to pick it up. And now again, I'm going to uh, press press shift F4 and it immediately transfers to Jfeth. So there with a, with a quick button press or a quick click, I can make a 
call or a transfer very easily. So if you have a a person that you transfer or you to and call a lot, uh, a call flow could be F6 to F answer, F7 to Jan transfer to John, F6 to answer, F7 to transfer to John, and make make some of those very common uh, things extremely easy and extremely fast to work with. So that's uh, that's a few ideas that we already have built in there. Uh, there's more, but use your imagination of what can be used for that. So I am going to jump into settings, and I'm going to start with how to set up these shortcuts since I'm, I'm talking about that. We'll come back to all these other settings as we go through. But first of all, I want to add a shortcut. And as you can see, we have all different kinds of templates in here that you can do. So I'm going to add one more to change my presence to available. So I'm going to pick that change presence shortcut. I'm going to add that. And then that adds that to the ender. I can I can call it uh, whatever I want to. I'm going to call it green, and I'm going to you know I can pick what it does here, but I'm going to leave it to available. And now that shortcut is up here. And if you'll notice my presence over here when I click on that, it goes to green, and go so it marks me as available. And I can set a shortcut. I did not set a shortcut key up to it, but you can do that. So that one button changes that so not only is it very easy to use and very efficient with one click or one button press to use it is also very easy to set additional shortcuts up for you so more on settings that ah, one more thing before I get the settings I'm going to um, change a few things and call you show you a call information panel so I am going to show you this here uh, this area up in here this is a caller information panel and here comes a call and notice as soon as that call rings in what's going to happen up in the caller information window here that pops up and I can actually hang that up it'll stay there this is pulling from my Dynamics GP database so that is our accounting system it is saying this guy is late on a payment it is giving me address service history one click access to my customer maintenance window so clicked on that and it pops up down here one click access to a map one click access to my service history so now we're we're extending one click not only outside of link and into exchange but into whatever other systems you have whether it's CRM Salesforce any of the dynamics products any SQL based things just just about any program that you have we can join up with that and give you that one-click access or a glance view of what you need to know when that call comes in. So it, it gives you more power, the information when you need it, where you need it. And I'll, in a little bit, I'll show how that gets set up. So in the meantime, here's some settings. So we talked about the contact sizes already. We, uh, this here is our groups, and I can pick which group it starts up in. We talked about this transfer mode on answer. I can set that to whatever. And that is just what it will default to. So as soon as I pick up a call, it's going to be in blind transfer mode. It does not in any way limit me from using the other transfer modes. It just saves me one click. Anytime we can make you a little more efficient, we do that. So that saves you one click. Of course, we have, uh, I think it's 15 some languages in there. And uh, we can always add more as needed. How is it going to uh, double, contact double click action? So what is that going to call? If I double click anywhere on this contact to transfer a call to them, what's it going to do? And that works uh, also for uh, Ender if I'm, I'm searching over in here. So Smart is going to use the link uh, contact or the link extension if it can, or if there's no link, but there's a work number, it'll use that. Smart is very likely what you're going to use. Uh, most people will leave it on that. But if you say, you know what, today I'm sick of it, I'm just sending everybody to voicemail, uh, you can set it that the double click does that. So whatever, however you want to work there, it gives you a, a consistent, predictable way that it's going to act the same every time. And smart is what most people will leave it at. Focus on incoming call. That allows the if you're typing away in your email or something else and a call comes in that will pop up in front of you the attendant pro will pop up now some people if especially I often use f6 to answer which is what I have the hotkey set to 
And so I don't necessarily need it to pop up. I can continue to type. I press F6 and I keep I start talking to that caller while I finish up some other task. So some people like it to pop up. Some people don't like it to pop up. So we make that an option for you to pick your option there. Enable button click. That just gives a sound when you click on stuff in a Tenon Pro if you like that enabled. Uh, enable Skype for business. So one of the things that we get questioned on a lot is, are we ready for Skype for business? And yes, we are. We're compatible. And we also have the, the Skype for business UI. So I'm going to bring a call in just to show you a little bit more how that looks. So definitely design elements from, from Skype for business. If I go to large contacts here, you see the round uh, profile picture. So it gives gives the Skype for business look and feel if you want that or and, and it is it is uh, interesting to note that either interface will work with either link or Skype for business client so you don't ha you aren't forced into one or the other but it gives you the option to pick the one that you like the best so search box uh, sends DTMF so DTMF is those codes that if it says press one for this press two for that uh, you need to send those DTMF tones and in the search box, when you're in a call, is it going to send uh, DTMF or not when you use your keyboard? So if I type John in some phone systems, Link will automatically translate that to the DTMF codes uh, for that. And that setting allows you to de determine whether that's going to work like that or not. If you're in transfer mode, this will always be searching no matter which way you have that set. If you're not in transfer mode, you can set that to send the tones versus uh, searching. So that's what that box is about. Different people like it different. So if I press hold on this next setting, hold on begin transfer, some people like to stay live with that call and continue to talk to them uh, while they they hit transfer. Sorry, not when I click hold, when I click transfer, should it stay live while I find out who I'm going to transfer that to? You can set it either way. Either you click transfer and immediately go on hold, or when you click transfer, it will enter that transfer mode, but will not go on hold so you can continue to talk. Different people like it different. When I press hold, will it clear the transfer mode or will it stay in that transfer mode? Now that we can transfer from on hold, do you want it to stay in transfer mode or do you want it to clear that mode so you can go make other calls instead? So that, again, some people like it one way, some people like it the other way. We give that option. One new feature that I did not point out in the, in the feature demo is the call as feature or delegate. So some people want to call out as another person or as an anonymous response group, for instance, or something like that. In Link, it's a little bit cumbersome. Each call you have to go into a drop-down menu and pick call as and you do the next call as here we make it very easily accessible right here with one drop down one click on that sends the sends it sets it so that I'm calling as link user 03 in this case and this setting determines whether it will revert after one call so every every time I set it like that after one call it'll go back to calling as myself or let that unchecked and it will stay as link user 03 in this case until I manually change it. So if you're doing a, a number of calls or always call as somebody else, that's a very important setting. So you don't have to always be doing that with each call. So we make it very easy to work with delegates and make that call as persistent. These next four are just cleaning up the window. So there's different things I can do on this window. I already showed you the caller information panel. There's also a keypad here that you can turn on or off. And down below here, there's a contact information window. And one of, uh, one of the things that is also new in this version, in this latest release, is these uh, sliders that allow me to adjust the screen the way I want to see it. So uh, that's that's a new option there. I just thought I'd point that out as I'm using them. So you can put caller information panel down there, and that just gives you information on the, the person you have selected, not uh, contact details, uh, contact information on the contact you have selected. 
And there's also something we do to give you a little bit of insight into response groups. So if I turn this respond, uh, RGS agent groups window on, I can see that I am part of three response groups. Two of them are green, I'm signed into those. One of them is red, so I'm not signed into that. That's a formal response group that I can sign in and out of. The numbers there are all at zero at this point, but it shows on each one the number of calls in that queue and what the longest wait time. So let's imagine that this middle one here that I'm signed out of has five calls in and I see somebody's been waiting for eight minutes and that's not acceptable. So I'm going to come over here and just right here within the program, one click brings up that link interface to sign in there. So I can come here, I can sign into that, uh, that response group and you'll see in a few seconds that this will change to signed in. There, now I'm signed in and now I'll start taking calls. And so that gives me uh, a little bit of insight into uh, response groups if I'm using them. And that is actually one that I do want to stay signed out of. So I'm going to come back in here and sign out of that. And so it makes it very easy for end users to, to be able to make a quick decision on if they should be signed in or out of that response group. While we're on response group, there's one other feature that we add to or, or make response groups easier to work with. One of the known link problems, if you want to call it that, or bugs, is that when you're in a response group, when you answer a call, sometimes there can be uh, a delay, sometimes multi-second delay until the audio is established. We can't change that on the client side. We wish we could, but we can make it very easy to work with. So when you're in a response group or anytime you answer a call, it will not come into the current call window until audio is established. So when you answer a call, you might see a second or two before it comes into the current call window. That is designed to show you exactly when you can start talking. So we, we do cannot fix that delay for Microsoft, but we can make it very easy to work with, a very obvious cue. Now you can start talking, so there's no uh, mistake of starting to talk before the audio is live. So that's one more thing we do with response groups. Let me bring that settings window up again. One more very important setting in this window is that suppress active call. So the active call window in link is that, that call window that pops up when you answer a call. We recommend that you suppress that here because if it does pop up, it can get confusing to some users because now they have two windows on their screen. And so that keeps that out of the way, limit, limits the confusion. Suppress call toast is that little toast that pops up, the, the call toast is that little box that pops up above the window, the clock area, bottom corner of your screen there. That can also be suppressed, although you can answer it in that and still, and still uh, do the call flow in Attendant Pro. So I typically leave that on. Shortcut keys. Here is a list of all the shortcut options, all the transfers, all the different options you have, and you can change those to whatever you want, whatever you're used to, whatever you like to be, like it to be. And on each one, you can pick whether it's global or local. So I have F6 set as answer, and I have it global. So if I am off typing in my email and I press F6, it's going to answer. However, I have F11 as park, not global. So to park, I have to be in Attendant Pro. I have to have Attendant Pro to f uh, in focus for that to work. That is so if you have a conflict with another line of business app that is using F11, you can control uh, how that works. So they're totally configurable and global or local is selectable there as well. Select dial is one of the, the options here. And what that is is Anywhere you see a phone number, you can highlight it, press F2 in this case, and it will bring Attendant Pro to the foreground and type that number in here so that you can just by pressing Enter make that call. So it makes outbound calling a little bit faster and easier. That callback reminder I showed you, showed you earlier, this is where you can customize that so you can put any kind of text in there and then say I want to have the contact name and then I want some more text and I want the call time uh, and so you can do those placeholders this can obviously be any language any any text that you want in there very very configurable 
for that feature. Talked about custom contact layouts. You can do all kinds of things. That is not an end user thing. That is a, a programmer thing using XAML code. Here's a sample of how that looks. So that is something that we can do for you or, or somebody that uh, you have on staff that, that does XAML programming can look at this and say, I want a huge or a small or whatever kind of contact fits you best or, or different information that you can add to that or take away from that. So very flexible on the on the custom contacts. This is where we configure that caller information window that I showed you. So what in this case what we're doing is looking up a SQL report and passing this phone number, the phone number, the caller ID into these brackets. So what that allows it to do is go say this is a SQL report, look it up on this phone number and return the information I want. Uh, another example that I often use is white pages. You whitepages.com slash phone number placeholder here, and it'll replace the phone number in there and go out to white pages and look up that phone number. So that is the, the, how simple it is to connect it with these different programs. It's just executing a URL. Here's where you turn those ad hoc notes on the caller window uh, for the, the caller there. This is where you turn that on and off and enable Exchange Web Services. And we already talked about the, the shortcut keys and how easy it is to set those up. So that is a, a quick overview. If anybody wants to have a, a full demo, a personal demo tailored to your scenario, get in contact with me at sales at landiscomputer.com and we can set that up. We, Our goal is to make receptionists and attendants and admins as fast and as efficient as possible 